Hey guys, Pepperami here. This week we are taking a look at kombucha and scobies again. Now you may have heard of kombucha and seen it and it can be quite pricey, but you want to brew your own as this will be much cheaper. Now chances are, if you have ordered one from an online smaller private seller, it will come in a bag like this. It should come sealed with roughly one cup of kombucha starter and a good sized scoby. Now if it does come with less liquid, I will explain what to do later on in the video. Now first things first, you do not want to throw away the liquid, you will need this later on. Now what is a scoby? It is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. So yes, this thing is alive and how do you turn that into kombucha? You will need black tea, sugar and water. Now some people may also ask, instead of sugar, can I use honey? Yes. Yes you can, but you will need more honey than sugar. And as honey is more expensive than sugar, this can be quite a costly way to brew. Now there are even green tea and honey kombuchas which are just called June, which is just purely made from green tea and honey. Now the way that kombucha is made, the scoby will feed on the sugar in the tea through a process called fermentation and produce your kombucha. Now as there is yeast in this, it will be slightly alcoholic, but I mean a 0.5% alcohol. Now if you are caffeine sensitive, the caffeine in kombucha is very reduced compared to a cup of tea, which can contain 25 to 50 milligrams of caffeine per serving, whereas kombucha only has 15 of roughly. Now next you will need a suitable vessel to brew your booch in. Now you can use most food grade glass jars or even a large vessel with a spigot on the bottom. Now with the larger jars you can even attach a fish tank thermometer to track the temperature of your brews as scobies can be quite heat sensitive. Now if you do choose to brew in a large jar with a spigot you will need to find a suitable one as kombucha becomes acidic and turns into a vinegar if left for too long. So if you are using a plastic coated spigot this can erode and taint your brew. So you want to use a food safe and preferably acidic safe tap. As you can see the plastic ones that I've used they are food safe but they have become quite discoloured where they have been in contact with the kombucha. Now unless you buy an all-in-one container for kombucha, these are normally big white buckets with a spigot on the bottom. You are best off looking for a stainless steel or surgical steel metal tap for the brewing jar as these won't react and they are easy to clean. Now the bonus of using a tap is you don't need to move the scoby out and tip the jar up every time you want to siphon your brew. And you can even do a thing called continuous brewing where as you siphon off a bottle or a cup, you just replace the removed liquid with the tea starter. Now if you are using a tap, make sure when you attach it to the jar that it is a absolute watertight seal, because if the kombucha leaks out it could damage the surfaces, as I said earlier it becomes kind of acidic. And if worse comes to worse, something could even get into the batch. Now you've chosen which jar you want to brew in, let's take a closer look at the scoby. Now scobies are very soft to the touch and the reason why you see me wearing gloves is for the safety of the scoby more than it is for me, as any soap or hand sanitizer I have on my hands could end up harming the scoby as by its nature it is made of yeast and bacteria and that's exactly what soap and hand sanitizer kill. Now you may see a small skin like growth on the scoby, this is actually how they can reproduce. They grow in layers so even when you get to a big one you can just peel off older layers or the newer layers. So you may start off with just a small scoby for now, but in time it will get thicker and wider and cover the whole surface of your vessel. Now eventually you will end up with more scobies than you know what to do with. So personally I made some of mine into jerkies and candies in some of my older videos that I may remake soon. Now the other part you may notice is wispy brown parts, these are actually yeast strands. You may start to notice them around the bottom of your brewing jar, this is totally fine but they can build up and block the spigot so it's always a good idea to remove some. And now to make a nice sweet tea for the scoby to eat and drink. Now for a gallon size batch or 4 litres you want chlorine free water, 
I personally just use filtered bottles of water. You will need four to six black tea bags or one to two tablespoons of loose black tea, one cup of sugar, one to two cups of starter liquid depending on the acidity, and of course a SCOBY. Now as I said earlier, you can use black tea, you can use green tea, or you can even use oolong tea. But you want to avoid using any tea that has any oils or extras in it, so don't be tempted to add a fruit flavoured tea to your batch, but you can experiment with mixing the black, green and oolongs. A green tea kombucha will give you a much lighter brew, and some even say it is slightly more carbonated. Now if you did indeed receive a SCOBY with less starter liquid, you can just simply scale down the batch by half or even a quarter and just use a smaller jar to start with. Some people say to top it off with vinegar, but personally I don't recommend doing that as that can taint the batch. I just would personally straight up use a reduced brew for your first batch and grow your SCOBY and get some starter liquid on the go. Now the reason why you'd want to scale down your batch is because if the acidity of the tea is not high enough, you could end up with a mold outbreak and I also have a video covering that too. Now with the base recipe given earlier, I boil around one quart or one litre of the water on the stove and add in the tea. You can also add in the sugar here as the sugar dissolves better in warmer water and then let this brew for around 10 minutes, remove your tea and let cool. Once cooled, add to a jar, top up with your water and add your SCOBY. Now what you can do here is if you have too many SCOBYs in your brewing jar, you can also make a SCOBY hotel. That's actually what I'm doing in my smaller jar. Now my older Larger SCOBY seems to be a bit old and rough looking, but the skin layer I took off earlier gets to go into the SCOBY hotel and make a wonderful adventure all on its own. Also, if eating your excess SCOBYs doesn't seem like a great idea or something you do not want to do, as they are all natural, you can just simply compost them as well. Then place your jars out of direct sunlight in a warmish area and watch your SCOBY grow. Now as it brews, the kombucha will become lighter, and I'm also growing tea plants, so next year I'm going to be trying to grow my own tea and turning that into kombucha as well, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, that wraps up this week's video. If you enjoyed, let me know down below. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe for free weekly cooking content. Starting next week is the Christmas season, so look forward to some interesting Christmas themed recipes and I will see you all again next week. Thanks for watching.